This video is going to help you figure out how to complete the Choropleth map assignment. And this will be the most complicated of the assignments and the last assignment, of course. So it might take a couple of video segments to get it all figured out. And as always, I'm happy to make extra videos for you if you have any confusion whatsoever with any of the instructions I give you now, or if I make some sort of mistake in the process of making it. We are going to start with importing our shapefile. And the shapefile that we are going to export is going to be a new one. And this is one that is going to be called um, the CB2018-02 census track. And that is a shapefile that's going to have all the census tracks for Alaska in it. Uh, you will see, though, as it's projected in, it is going to be projected at NAD83, which is a geographic coordinate system rather than a projected coordinate system. So when we bring it in, it's going to be really tiny and down here at the bottom of the page. And in fact, the illusions are going to be over here because of the way that the coordinates are set up. So the first thing we need to go to do is to go to the map views and we need to click into the envelope that holds that shape file, as we've done before, and perform a coordinate system transformation. And you're going to have select find that and select it. And I recommend that one of the ones that you um, use is the NAD83 Alaska Albers, which you will be able to find if you go to the projected coordinate systems here and then search around a little bit for it. It shouldn't be that hard. It should be under North America and then under United States and under Alaska. And that NAD83 Alaska Alber should fit this quite well. So if I say okay to this, um, you'll see that this is the shape it's going to, um, the space it's going to take up on the artboard. I'm gonna say okay to that. And you'll see that Alaska is now handsomely reprojected here. We may want to make some adjustments to the artboard, um, making that artboard just a little bit bigger because the shape files, of course, been um, matched to the size of the artboard. So that re might require you to fiddle with things with fiddle things a little bit, uh, but it shouldn't be that particularly hard to do. So now let's go take a look at that shape file, and we're going to do that by clicking at the at on the at map attributes. And when we bring the map attributes in, what you are going to see is that the map attributes are pretty simple, um, but they do have this code, which is the geographic ID code. And that's a pretty important code that we're going to be using here. So the next thing we want to do, since there's no data attached to the shapefile, is to join some data to it. And joining is a process that we do when we bring a spreadsheet data and match it to a shapefile. And so we're going to go to the lower um, part of the attributes right here and click on join table. And that's going to spawn another window. You are going to have to go and find the source um, that you would like to use. And I have posted that for you. The place where I, uh, the what I posted was something called Alaska race ethnicity data. I'm going to say open to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load that data. Once I've loaded the data, I'm going to have to match the, um, match the geographic codes. And if you go and look inside that data, which I didn't do, you'll see that what is loaded as geography actually matches that AF geoid um, column that we have right here. And so if you have these things two together, you should be able to join that successfully. So let's see if this works. I'll say OK. And you'll see that now the data has expanded. And if I scroll over here to the side, there will be a bunch of new data. And one of the things that I immediately suggest that you do to this data is, is begin to modify the schema a little bit. And that's just so it takes up less space. So we have total numbers for the population of each census tract in Alaska now as well as the population of white only, Hispanic only, black um, or African American only, et cetera. These are all given though um, in what are called um, real, um, real numbers. 
So they have decimal points and they're actually integers. So I want to go and I want to edit the schema a little bit. And I'm going to go down here and click edit schema and it will bring up a whole nother window, which I'm going to bring in here as well. And when I scroll down to this, you can see if I click on that total, for example, it's calling it a double here. Um, we want to get rid of that double and we want to call it an integer instead. And as soon as we do that, what you'll see is that number goes down to something a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to stop the video right now and I'm going to do that for each of these columns. Okay, I've modified all these columns now so they are integers and they're a little bit easier to look at and use now. And another thing that I've done in editing the schema is, again, just to make things a little bit easier to use, is I've made a lot of the, um, the columns that I don't need um, invisible. So you can no longer see them. And, and that there's a little box right here that you click. You'll see I've left on the um, geographic code, but then I've turned off things that duplicate it. I kept the name on. Um, but then some of this other stuff, I've just made it so I can't see it right now. Um, and all you do, for example, I forgot to do that geographic area name one, which is the same as that AFF and GEO ID. So I'm just going to make that invisible right now as well. Um, and that just makes the table a little bit easier to use and to look at. We still have the names of each of the census tracts of Alaska. Um, we also have that geographic code in case we need that for some reason. And then we have the total population in each census tract, and then all this so-called race and ethnic data, the way that the Census Bureau collects it and that I have tabulated it here for you. So now the next thing we need to decide is how are, what are we going to map here? And the simplest thing to do is to map the percentage of one particular ethnic or native, or ethnic or racial group in Alaska. Uh, but we want to turn that into a rate and not do it by number. Another thing that we can do is we can map diversity. And I'm not going to do that in the video right now, but in class, we'll talk about how you can create a diversity index that you can use. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, actually map what the Asian alone population is. And so to do that, I go back to edit schema. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column at the bottom. I'm going to add an attribute. And I don't want that one to be an integer. I'm actually going to make that a double. Um, so I'm going to give it a name and I'm just going to call it Asian underscore percent. So it will be easy for me to find. And then I'm going to make it a double number. And I'm going to reduce the number of decimals from six actually down to just one. And then I'm going to say, OK. So now I have a new column here, but that column doesn't have anything in it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that column so that it has some content. So let's go back to that edit schema and I'm going to click on Asian percent right here. And now I'm going to say, let's derive that from an expression. And I'm going to create an expression here with the expression builder. The expression builder comes up and I'm going to say that this population is going to equal um, the number of Asian. So that is the Asian alone. And then I'm going to divide that by the total. That would then give me a, a number which would just have a decimal point, just one decimal point. But I actually want it to be shown as a percentage. So I'm actually going to modify that a little bit further. And I'm going to put um, brackets around it. And I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the number 100. And that then should give me a valid expression that's going to show the percentage of Asian in each census tract. And I'm going to say OK to that. And then if everything looks good to me in terms of decimals and things like that, I'm going to say, OK. And what you'll see that immediately has happened is that there is a percent um, of Asian that is now populated each of these census tracts here. So we can immediately begin to map that. So I can go ahead and close the map attributes now. Um, those are loaded here in this. And I can also do some of the basic preparatory stuff 
that um, we have been doing in each of these maps as well. So let me zoom out just a little bit. And then I'm going to put a box around um, the back of all of this so it has some sort of color to it. Again, things that we've done before that you guys should feel pretty confident in doing right now. We could go with blue as we've done in some of the other mapping. Um, but this time around, I'm actually going to change that and I'm going to make it sort of a light gray color and I'm going to call that good. I don't need a stroke around it or anything like that. That's just the artboard. Um, I'm also going to ultimately have to change the colors of the, um, the census tracts themselves, which we can see expressed right here. But I, I don't need to worry about that right now. I'm going to do that later when I actually do the cartographic portion of this, um, in which I do what is called um, in Map Publisher a batch generating of a style sheet rule. So I'm going to save that for the next section, and we're going to stop here with sort of the preparation of the map. All right, so now we have this map of census tracts of Alaska. Let's actually map the percent Asian, uh, which we have identified as the subject that we would like to pursue for this particular map. Before we do any of the classification that we're going to need to do, let's actually first open the swatch window. So the swatch window, if you don't have it already ready to go, you'll be able to find by going to Windows and opening Swatch. Once you're in the swatch window, if you click on the little hamburger menu, which is in the upper right hand corner, um, it will give you an opportunity to open the swatch library, which you'll sort of be able to see here on the screen, not entirely. I'm going to go to map swatches. And from there, I'm going to go to color brewer. And you should know color brewer now a little bit at least because I hopefully mentioned it in class or will mention it in class if you are starting, um, if you're a little bit of ahead right here. And I'm going to go to the sequential RGB and just choose a color that I want to use. And I'm feeling a little red purple today. So I'm going to click the red purples and you will see it brings up these colors and I have to select one of these as the, um, the sequence that I want to use. And it's going to be based on how many classifications I'm going to use. And I'm going to choose five. I really haven't examined this data in any way yet. So I might actually want to go um, with a fewer or I might want to go up a little bit. But for the time being, I'm just going to go with five. And when you um, have it, you can then go ahead and collect, um, select that um, little folder right there. And it will save that down in your swatches down below. You'll see it appears right here. So now you have that swatch um, selected. And if, by the way, you turn off this and turn it back on, um, you might have to go select that swatch again. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some mapping. And we're going to do the mapping by going to the map themes first. And when we go to the map themes, we're gonna choose a new theme. Um, but this time, instead of doing a chart theme like we did before with the last map, we're going to do a style sheet theme. And we're going to call this um, Asian percent. How about percent Asian? It's going to be an area feature because we're going to be mapping polygons this time. We've done lines, then points, and now polygons. And when that looks right, we can say, okay. Now we want to click into this and we actually want to begin to modify it a little bit. Um, we want to map percent Asian and we're going to have to select a layer that we are going to be mapping. And that layer is going to be, it's going to have only one option. That will be the census tracts. So I'm going to say okay to that. Um, and now what I need to do is I need to actually do what's called batch generate rules. And I'm going to click on batch generate rules and I'm going to have to choose an attribute that I want to map. And the attribute that I want to map is that new attribute that I created, which is that Asian percent right down there. And then I'm going to press load right here. Um, it has brought it in and it gives me the opportunity to change how I would like to classify this data. We can actually take a look at it 
by clicking on this chart here, which is a, a pretty cool thing to see the histogram here. And you'll see that it's putting it into equal intervals right now. But if we had those equal intervals, it would mean that we would have a couple of um, census tracts that wouldn't be represented at all. So I think I'm going to change that from equal intervals. And instead, I'm going to go with something that is called natural breaks. And let's see what that looks like. Click on that histogram again, and you'll see that now I've got, it looks like just maybe one um, or two um, census tracts in interval five. I've got a distribution that looks pretty good in four, and then um, more in three, two, and one. Um, and you can see the breakdown over here. I could mess around with this a little bit more. Like, let's say I wanted to get a few more in that very dark one. Um, I could go with quantiles instead. And you can modify this as you want to. Um, and I'm going to let you sort of think that through how you want to do it and how you want each of these to express. Um, I actually think that I like that natural break one a little bit better. And then we'll be able to see um, where the highest Asian population is just in one census tract, which sort of seems interesting to me right now. A lot of this is, of course, going to depend on how you, what you want to map and what you want to show. <clears throat> okay, so now I have Asian percent loaded. I've selected my data classification. I'm using five data classes. I should have said that that was the case. And then I'm going to <clears throat> um, actually go here and I'm going to set the fill. And when I set the fill, I'm going to click on the swatch bar right here, and it's going to bring up the various ramps that I can select from. And since I selected that red purple one here, I'm able to click on that. And then it's going to assign these to each of these. And the natural way for this to be assigned is, of course, to have the very darkest coal color on the census tracts that have the highest percentage. Um, that's going to give us that sort of natural notion of areas that are very highly Asian versus areas that aren't. We can also set the stroke here if we wanted to, um, and we can set other things as well. I'm going to not do that for the time being. I'm just going to add this, and I'm going to then apply it, and we are going to see what this map looks like. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not probably a huge fan of this map because there's so much white space on it and so little purple space. And so I might want to go back to this and modify it. So let's actually do that. I'll go back here and I'm going to batch edit the rules and I'm going to <laughs> change this um, to something else. In fact, what I might have to do to tell you the truth because I'm gonna start from scratch is I might actually just want to delete this whole thing. And so I'm just going to delete every one of these and I'm going to create a new set of rules. I'm going to have to, it still says percent Asian, so I should be good with that. Um, and I'm going to, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to hit the batch generate rules. I'm going to go ahead and select the percent Asian again. And I'm going to load it. And at this time, I'm actually going to use those quantiles and see if I like that. I'm going to set the fill. I'm going to select the red purple that I had before. I'm going to add this and then I'm going to apply it. And now I have a map that I think is probably a little bit better, something that I, I, I actually want. So now I have to begin to think through some other aspects of making the map. Um, one of which is, what do I want all of those borders to look like? Um, right now, they're sort of thick black lines. And if I zoom down um, pretty close into Anchorage, for example, you'll see that the lines are really overwhelming. So they're obviously much too large. Um, this I'm going to modify in the properties rather than in the batch edit. So I'm going to select all the census tract lines, and I'm going to go to the properties of those lines. And I'm going to change the stroke here from 0.1 to something quite small, like 0.05, to see what that looks like. And now we have lines that look a little bit better. Um, they're black, though. And I don't know if black is the best selection um, that we have here. We might want to choose another color of line. But again, you know, I'll let you figure out what you might want to do 
with those various lines and what you might, what sort of design choices you might want to make. I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change that color um, from the black color and I'm just going to make it sort of a dark gray color and see what that looks like. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about it. That looks a little bit better to me. It does give me some figure ground contrast in here, which is good. Um, for the time being, this is fine. Again, you may want to change some of this. That is up to you. So another problem that you're going to see with this map, as soon as you start looking at it, is that we can't really see a lot of the differentiation of census tracts in many parts of Alaska, because some census tracts are huge. I mean, this one covers pretty much all of the North Slope, and then others are tiny, like some of the ones in Anchorage. So how do we solve this? Well, we are going to solve this by building insets. And I'm just going to make one inset, but you should probably have more than one inset. The way to do this is actually to go ahead and open a new file. And you can create it, again, at the common size. It's probably the easiest to do that. And it's going to create it over here. And now what you are going to do is you are going to go to a map publisher um, tool that you are going to use to copy the map. And that tool is right up here next to where you were adding um, your shape files. Copy map objects from, click on that, it will spawn a new window. And then what you can do is you can go to um, your, your map that you have in the other page, which I still have called untitled number one here and click on it and it will copy everything. Everything is checked. I say, okay. And the map appears here. Now it left off the little map box, but we don't need the color in the background at this point. We can change that later on. So now we have this new map and what we can actually do is zoom into just the space that we want. And once we have zoomed into the area that we want, I'm just going to do the Anchorage area here. You'll see that it's locked. So I'm going to unlock it for the time being. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm actually going to put that layer above so I can see it. And I'm going to create, I'm going to draw a box. And I'm going to draw a box so I sort of get like most of the Matsu Valley and part of Anchorage. And it will just be sort of a little square right here. I might make that just a little bit bigger to include that. And it's, it's left this big black line here, which we don't want, um, so we can see this. So I'm going to change the fill in the background, and I'm actually going to change the stroke at the same time. And I am going to make the stroke to be, I think I made that other one 0.02, is that right? And I'm going to select the color so it's the same as that other one as well. And then I should have that good to go. There's that box and it's selected as well. Now with that box selected, I'm going up to the cropping tool and I'm going to say map crop to shape. And it's going to spawn a little dialog box. It says all layers and document. And I'm going to say yes. And so everything will be gone now. And now what I am able to do here, because nothing is selected, or nothing is locked rather, is I can go all the way around this and select everything. You'll see everything is selected right now. And I can say file, or um, I can say edit, copy, excuse me, and I can go back to my original one. And here I can zoom down to where I want it to be. And I'm just going to put it down below here. And I'm going to say edit, paste. I'm attempting to paste or drag more layers that are locked or hidden. Um, do you want to unlock and show the appropriate layers? Um, I'm going to say no. And actually, you know what I probably should have done here, and I'm glad that it gave me that little error, is create a new layer that I can call inset. Inset 1. That's what I should have done and then had that highlighted. That's probably a best practice. Or who knows where it's going to end up. And now I'm going to paste it, and, and it pastes it. But of course, it's really tiny, and so I want to make it a lot bigger than that. And I can do that by going to the Object Transform 
and then scale it and make it a lot bigger. And I'm not exactly sure how big I should make it. I'm going to make it 450% larger. I mean, we do want to be able to see it, right? Because that's the whole point behind this. And that actually might not be big enough. So I'm actually going to undo that scale and I'm going to go back to object transform and scale. And this time I'm going to make it um, 650%. And say okay and that looks a little bit better now it's all selected so i should be able to move everything around um, here on the inset i can just select it here and i can drag it or i can use the cursors to move things around which is what i'm going to do and so now we can see it and you'll see that there's a box drawn around it and um, we also have the same color that we have in the background we actually might want to make that box that's around it um, a little bit stronger than it is right now, that rectangle, so that it has a bit of a neat line around it. So I'm going to go from that, instead of make it 0.02, I'm going to make it 0.2. And again, these are things you'll want to experiment with. And I'm going to change it from that to a slightly darker color. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to collapse that inset and lock the whole thing and sort of see what I have created. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see it in the context of the rest of Alaska. And that's looking pretty good. I can see Anchorage. Um, I can see where it is. Um, now you're probably going to have to have some way to identify where that is. You can do that by drawing lines from the, um, from the box down to the Anchorage area. Or if you want to, um, something that I sort of like to do is to create an arrow that shows where it goes. And so let me just do that very quickly. You guys are getting pretty good at this stuff now. I'm going to use the curvature tool and I'm just going to sort of draw an arrow that goes from here um, down to the Anchorage area generally. And again, I'd want to spend a lot more time sort of working on this if I were doing it. I'm going to go to the properties here. I want the fill as um, nothing, but I want that stroke a lot more than that. So I'm going to make that go up to maybe like uh, four points and see how that goes. Probably needs to be even, even bigger than four. I'm going to make it eight points. And then I'm going to go down to the stroke window and I'm going to put an arrowhead on it. Not sure which way that arrowhead is going to go. That may, went the wrong way. So um, I am going to get rid of the arrowhead and I'm going to put it on the other side. And now I have an arrowhead that's probably a bit too big. So let's reduce that down to 40% and call that good for the time being. Oops, did not mean to do that. So I'm going to go back and get rid of that curvature point. And I think I'm, I'm good. Um, I would, of course, have to label that and lock that. So now you can get a sense for how to make insets and you should have an inset not only for the Anchorage area, but also for the Fairbanks area and a good negative space to put that would be somewhere up in here. So I'm going to stop for the time being. And next thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about will be about doing your sort of final finishing points. Okay, so now it's time to think about finishing the map, which I am not going to do here. Um, you will have to do at least one more inset, and the natural place to do an inset is probably up here to do the Fairbanks area. You are going to want to add a scale bar of some sort, and since we did that in the last map, I'm not going to recreate that, and place a north arrow. Note that the north arrows, um, where it ends up positioned on the map, is going to mean that that north arrow is going to point in very different ways because it's a conic projection and it's only sort of right at the middle of the map where the north arrow will point directly to the north. So consider that. Um, you'll need a title probably of some sort. Well, you'll definitely need a title, but whether or not you need a subtitle or anything like that is up to you. And of course, you'll need the source, which in this case is US Census Bureau and it's all 2018 data and your name as well. And then of course, you'll need a legend. Well, when in legend creation before, it was a little bit complicated because you had to create it all on your own. Um, I am going to create the legend this time using the map theme itself. So I can click on the percent Asian here under the map theme 
and click on this little button down here called Create Map Theme Legend. And it's going to ask me, do I want to create a legend layer? I do. And now it's going to ask me what kind, and I'm just going to create the default legend. And it's going to spawn this window right here. And that window um, is going, it's going to look a little bit different than what I want it ultimately to look like. And one of the problems is that I think when I did the batch creation rules, I, I allowed it to have six, um, six digits. Um, and I don't, I really should have just made it one. So I'm going to actually change these. And that's pretty easy to do um, just by clicking on this. I'll start in the bottom right here. It's the percent Asian. And I'm going to reduce that um, number just to 9.4%. Remember, I'd already created these as percentiles. And I'm going to call that 57.3% rounding up. And I'm going to do these for the other ones as well. This is just going to be 0.8%, so very small percentage of Asian living in those census tracts. Um, and let me do it for the other ones as well. Okay, I think I'm good there. I've got all of that. Um, we can make other changes here as we want to. Uh, we can, for example, um, change the font size if we want. We could also give it a title if we want. We could change the icon style from a rectangle to other things. I'm just going to keep it as a rectangle, or should I see what happens when I press ellipse? Do we like that or not? That's up to you um, how you decide to do it. Um, I am going to give it a title. Um, the default will just be legend, and we don't ever want to call legend just legend. So I'm going to change this to percent Asian um, by census tract. And this has made the legend a little bit too big. So I think I'm going to reduce that font size from 12, um, maybe down to nine points and see what that looks like. That might require me to change the legend entry um, font size as well from 12 um, down to the same thing, just so things look right on the map. Again, you'll want to futz around with these things a little bit and decide how you want it to look. You can change the border of it. Right now, it's just got this black square. We might want to change that to match the theme that I've sort of been building on here. And that theme had sort of a dark gray color. So I'm going to go with the dark gray color. And then we might want to change, in addition um, to the border, the fill, which currently is just white. So it'll be what's ever underneath it. Um, and again, I'm going to just mess around with this a little bit, not knowing exactly what it will be. And I'll give it sort of like a light gray color and say OK to that. Now, it's about the same color that I already had. So I actually want to make that a little bit lighter and just see what that looks like, see if it looks good. Um, anyhow, um, when we're done with all of this, we can go ahead and say Create. And then it's going to place that legend here. And of course, we can select it over here, and we can drag it to where we want it to go. And so I'm just going to drag this thing and place it over here. We, again, might want to change this a little bit. And I certainly think that I would want to scale it, too. So I'm going to go to that transform to scale. It went all the way up to 650%, which is what I had before. I'm just going to make it go to 150% instead. Um, and if we put a title on here, that might end up matching well and be plenty visible um, for the creation of this final map. So you'll have a lot of little design decisions to make here, especially if you go relatively simply like this. Um, that might sort of take up the majority of what you do. Let me remind everyone that in addition to um, having the option of doing the Asian, or not just the Asian, but one ethnic group population, you are also free if you would like to, to come up with a diversity index. Again, we will talk a little bit about the diversity index in class and how to create that. But hopefully this helps you with this project and figure out how you want everything to look and what your final map product will be. And I think again, what you'll find is that you can create a very handsome looking map in the end. As always, you are free to ask me questions and ask for special requests for maps and videos and things like that. All right, good luck.